For the last 15 years, the push to transition from using the Electoral College to the national popular vote to elect a president has been growing stronger and stronger. But after the insurrection at the Capitol, will there be enough support to make this happen by 2024? Boston 25 News reporter Wale Aliou has been speaking with authors, historians, and legislators to see. And Wale, what are the chances this happens? It's slim, Ock. There's growing movement and push and pressure for it, but it's still slim. There's basically two ways this happens. Number one, a constitutional amendment. But without a split Republican Party, it is likely not going to get enough votes as it needs two-thirds votes in Congress for that to pass. So the second and more likely way this happens is through state legislation. Before we heard this, we heard this. I just want to find... 11,780 votes. He lost by 7 million votes. But he's not making claims about the popular vote outcome. He's making a claim about an 11 vote margin in Arizona or a similar tiny margin in Wisconsin or Georgia, right? That is uh, the current system exacerbates those margins. If, if some 23,000 Americans had changed their mind and they happen to live in one of those states, he would have become the president. About a third of the United States, Massachusetts included, has signed the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact to change that system. They add up to 196 electoral votes. The bill has a trigger in it where it goes into effect once states with a majority of the electors, 270 have passed the bill. The compact only needs 74 more electoral votes to get to 270, but look at this. It already has passed at least one legislative chamber and nine additional additional states, which total 88 more electoral votes. It's more than enough, but how likely is it to happen before 2024? A significant question about whether a compact of this sort requires congressional approval. Lawyers disagree about that. Harvard Kennedy School professor Alex Kazar says even if it passes, lawsuits would emerge almost immediately, stalling the process. And the only other way is a constitutional amendment, which he says is more unlikely. A number of Republican Congress people um, in the last couple of weeks have basically said we have to keep the Electoral College because we've lost the popular vote in seven out of the last eight presidential elections. <laughs> How much more did what happened at the Capitol last week help your cause? People are starting to pay attention to the mechanics of the way the Electoral College works. The fact that states have the power to change the way the Electoral College works within the Constitution. This is all good for us. I have one more map I want to show you. This is the map of the United States from the national popular vote that disproportionately, look at it, it highlights disproportionately the state's where campaigning has mattered in recent elections. You can see Massachusetts is not on here. It's simply battleground states like New Hampshire, Ohio, and Florida. The group says both Republicans and Democrats and all of the other states are basically disenfranchised voters because of the Electoral College. That is an interesting map you just showed us, Wale. Also interesting, for a 20-year-old in America, most of their life, the occupant of the White House did not get the most votes. It's happened five times. Is this a trend that is likely to continue? It can continue unless we move to the popular vote, they say. If we stay in the Electoral College, that can absolutely continue. And why does that matter? Well, it matters because of a lot of the conversations we've been having over the course of the last year. People feeling like their votes don't matter. People claiming fraud or fraudulent elections. They say with the Electoral College, any candidate can, of course, claim a fraudulent election and more people will believe them. Very interesting reporting tonight. Makes you think, Wale. Thank you.